in 2007, I went back and I went to uh, Ramadi, and um, that was really intense. Ramadi's always been one of the most intense cities uh, for fighting in Iraq, and um, you know that that was an eye opener compared to 2005, which was mostly just you know, hanging out in the open desert or you know sitting on top of a building. You know, Ramadi was street, you know, street by street fighting, even in 2007. Um, but at that point, you know, the I guess the war was starting to wind down a little bit. You know, people were starting to get um, fed up with, you know, a war that was supposed to, you know, supposedly over, you know, three days after it started. Um, you know, the insurgent obviously, you know, fighting uh, fighting fire with fire. I mean, the insurgency is not um, has never been productive you know, as far as we've seen in our time, and so. Um, so I came home in 2008, you know, like I said, 2007 was pretty nuts, and um, I started to see things happen. Um, you know, people people with, you know, the long-term effects of uh, PTSD, PTSD that, uh, that went untreated. Um, we were, uh, on my way back from, uh, in 2008, uh, we started hearing about uh, traumatic brain injury which, uh, which happens, you know, when your uh, head gets jostled. You know, <laughs> football players get it, um, but you know, we get uh, soldiers get it from, uh, you know, IEDs or other explosions that kind of the shock wave just kind of like rattles your brain and you know pushes it against your skull. And so, you know, I'd been I'd been blown up in IEDs probably more than ten times before I ever heard of TBI, and you know, it was always. Um, you know, as long as you were okay, didn't have any uh, shrapnel wounds or anything, it's just, oh, just take some ibuprofen, that headache will go away. And so, uh, I, I was, you know, I, did, I, don't, I don't know who's, you know, who's to fault for that, but uh, I'm, I'm glad they figured it out, but you know, I really wish they would have figured that stuff out sooner, so it would have, um, it would have saved a lot of people. Um, but, you know, the PTSD thing, you know, that's, that's the one thing that just really irks me. You know, I mean, it's been an ongoing issue, but um, you know, the biggest the biggest thing that I've seen, um, you know, coming home from all my uh, friends, um, I lost a lot of friends who, you know, they didn't die on the battlefield. They just came home and and couldn't cope with, you know, whatever it was. I I I don't even know. You know I talked to therapists about, you know, how to how to fix it, but you know, there's just some people that just come home and they just. You know, the, the war is never over for them. They just, you know, just end up committing suicide over something stupid. You know, it's just, uh, that's, the, that's the one thing that, you know, really, really bothers me is all the friends. That, you know, not that I lost in the war. I mean, they, that, that bothers me a lot too. But, the, you know, the ones that could have been saved by, you know, a phone call or, you know, proper, proper help when they came home instead of just, you know, railroading us through, you know, health screenings and you know, mental health screenings where, you know, psychologists will do, you know, 12 to 1,500 people in a day, you know, so, I mean, if you, I don't even know how you average that out. If there's a, you know, 10-hour health screening that a psychologist does and he has to see 1,500 people. Do you really think that he can, you know, make a valid assessment of what you're feeling? I mean, I don't. I, don't. And, I mean, obviously there's other... Um, services available but you know what if you don't think you need them and then you know when you finally figure out that you do need them it's too late um, i've lost i've lost five friends myself personally that i know that just you know killed themselves and you know and that number is increases every year um uh soldier suicide i think is, is up 300 percent since these wars started and that's that's an incredible number you know to me and um, you know, I, I'm glad that uh, I had the foresight and the wherewithal to get help because, you know, I mean, it could have happened to me. It, there we go. It could happen to anyone, you know. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm sick of seeing, you know, these banks get, you know, trillions of dollars in bailouts when, you know, the VA is just so completely underfunded. And, you know, I mean, they do the best that they can, but, um, and, but you know, the health services there are just completely overburdened, and they were not, you know, not expecting um, 
you know, all the um, patients that they that they got in you know Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, um, and you know I just want to see I want to see more. I want to see them you know get more and be able to do more for us. And, you know I I really don't I don't really use them that that much. I haven't had to you know thank God other than the you know counseling, but. You know, the, there are people there that do need it, and, you know, and they should be able to get get the help that they need without having to jump through all kinds of red tape. The one time I did have to use the VA uh, for health services, I was uh, hiking up in Maine, and I uh, uh, broke my ankle, and so I managed to hitch a ride into this small little town um, called Mexico, Maine, and they had a VA health clinic there. And so I was like, all right, well, hey, maybe I can get my ankle checked out and taped up, and maybe I can get back to hiking. Um, I walked in, and they uh, and they told me that they can only see uh, local patients. And I was like, well, I have my you know ID card here, and you know, I'm a veteran. Here's you know, here's my uh, here's my VA card, and they were, and I I was just I couldn't believe that they wouldn't see me. I had to come all the way back down to Boston just to get seen by my because they said that they didn't have the, you know, the funds to see outside uh, patients. And so that's, you know, I mean, that's just my own personal experience to see, you know, what, um, how they, how they deny. Yeah, there we go. But anyway, um, you know, if you, uh, if you don't know a vet or, you know, don't, um, haven't had too much exposure to one, you know, go. Go talk to them. You know, don't ask them. Oh, how many people have you killed? You know, that's anything like that. But you know, um, talk to them because they're they got a lot of a uh, lot of knowledge and a lot of experience and a lot of stories that you won't hear. You know, on the on the news. And you know, it's important. You know, as a, as Americans or as students that you you know really find out what you know what really happened over there. It's not you know, it's not the patriotic. You know, watered-down version of uh, a happy war that you know, everybody comes home happy. And, um, you know, these countries they get democracy. It just happens overnight because that's certainly, you know, we gave them democracy, but we uh, we fenced them in in the process. I don't know how that. Um, if uh, if we turn this into like uh, an Iraqi green zone right now, you you would not believe. You wouldn't dare call it democracy. You know, I think it's it's important that, uh, you know, at least as far as me, um, I'll tell you, I've been involved with the uh, Occupy Boston movement since uh, the very first planning GA. Um, the whole reason I'm here is because I want to uh, I want to effectively end these two wars and uh, bring my bring my buddies home. You know, I still have friends that serve, and you know, they have a hard time understanding what we're you know what we're doing out here because you know even even they're done, but. You know they're done with the wars, but they're you know just that's more for their own personal reasons. They just they just want to come home. They're sick of going over there and not achieving anything. But, um, you know they just they just want a break. But, you know for me, I, I, I guess I kind of want the same thing. But I'm sick of you know spending the money and not getting any kind of results, and you know, them spending their time. And so you know that's. Uh, that's the whole reason, you know, I, I occupy and, um, you know, I just, I wanted to bring, you know, that, that anger and that, um, you know, that resolve that I, that I had in the military, you know, to be able to go and do these, you know, 12, 15, 18 month deployments and, you know, just bring it to something that, you know, is actually going to achieve something. So, you know, I really hope that, you know, by not just sleeping out here, but by talking to people and, you know, um, spreading the message that, you know, that we can we can do this, and I mean apparently now the the rhetoric rhetoric is that they are going to leave, troops are going to start leaving Iraq. I mean, you know, but I don't know how much I believe it. We have uh, billions of dollars, you know, invested in you know, military infrastructure over there, so I don't know how much you know I believe that we're just going to leave all that stuff behind. I mean, maybe we will, or maybe we'll hand it over to the Iraqis. I I hope that's the case, and that you know. It sucks we're going to lose out on that investment, but I'd rather cut a bad investment now than, you know, you know, put another 10 years in and not get anything out of it, so.
anyway, thank you guys for your time. Um,